All right. So um, my my what I will be discussing today is the the idea of the intersection uh, between housing and um, the safe city, or what uh, I would like to phrase as towards a safer city. Um, so I often see this as, as, as two kind of nexus points between exposure and access to housing. And that also often integrates itself with um, land and, and legal tenure and recognition. Uh, but also what I, I've been looking at over the last 20 years, so a bit like Murray in terms of a time frame over 20 years, of this kind of nexus of the, the public realm um, in our housing environments and probably something that we underestimate when we look at housing. So, but in that, that domain, it's this, um, on the one side, we have areas um, of crime and violence and inequality. And these areas also struggle from even basic infrastructure development. Um, and when I talk about infrastructure, I also talk about the soft infrastructure um, and social infrastructure that may be lacking in areas uh, which doesn't even have um, housing um, in, in its formal sense. Um, but in, in this nexus, we also have the intersection of um, local agency, um, what I like to understand as creativity, but framed in the, this urgency um, and in a very fragile state um, in environments on our periphery, maybe in our periphery, that's kind of my lens of what I've been looking at. So in some, some recent engagements um, in Johannesburg, it was very clear that there was this notion of sort of uh, s s sort of self-construction happening um, along with, with extremely basic service delivery that really comes into question um, in which we have to critique what is a, a level of service that is acceptable. Um, and then on the other side, um, areas and public spaces which are very transitional um, um, with layered occupation of buildings um, and again in public spaces that hold this aspect of collective um, and commoning. So with this understanding over, over sort of these 20 years, um, I've looked at sa a safety in, in, in three different perspectives and I, and I often find that it's something that we need to sort of relook at and, and understand in more detail. So the first one is this idea of urgent land occupation um, and growth on the peri-urban area, mainly of self-constructed neighborhoods, which have very porous um, and often imaginary boundaries um, and ever expanding. So that, that, that is the first one. The second one is this um, idea of informal urban infill um, and this very dynamic change that is happening within um, established uh, neighborhoods and often township neighborhoods, but also within peripheral inner city blocks. So this urban infill and this occupation of space uh, that requires further research and understanding to really what is happening in um, our existing neighborhoods. And then the third one being around incremental transformation within um, identified, um, and I say that with purposely informal settlements in post-apartheid informal settlements, including what is actually happening in terms of the institutional common spaces in these informal settlements. So focusing on those three different aspects around safety and housing. So the first area that I'll just quickly touch on um, is an area in Harare in Zimbabwe, in Hatcliffe. And my focus here is around safety and secure life space. Um, so in looking up, uh, in researching this area over 10 years, there were four particular areas that I found that were fundamental to uh, this idea of neighborhood and housing and what was in the public realm. And the first one was that the street and the, the, the points of water or the, the basic services formed a, a, created a form of social infrastructure. Um, and that is often something when we talk about housing, we don't actually talk about those uh, kind of fundamental common spaces. Um, the street was an economic life space. So how do we actually understand and design our cities um, in having that, that economy within it? Um, the third one was around a territorial base of the house as a home and not ne necessarily what we often refer to as housing. Um, and then the fourth one was the, 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 the fragility of such areas which are very prone to dislocation and eviction 
but also fundamentally destroy social networks. Um, in this area, people moved in, um, between different areas and neighborhoods um, and were part of the 2005 Murambachina, where everybody was actually evicted from the land. Um, in quickly moving to this idea of safety and land occupation, or almost permanent land occupation, um, to some more recent work um, uh, looking at Havana in Vintok, um, and understanding these aspects in, in kind of a very newer settlement environment. Um, so again, this notion of, of a soft and a social infrastructure, which forms the core of a community, um, but also has particular community agency within these spaces. And what often we consider as temporary is actually quite permanent. Um, so uh, is understanding a lot of um, sort of what we would see from the outset as sort of a more informal shack is actually quite a permanent building inside uh, with proper uh, windows and doors and, and, and kind of permanent brick structure. But also this idea of how do we define space, this, this threshold between public and private um, is very important when we talk about uh, the home versus, versus housing. Um, in, in moving to that idea of uh, the urban infill and what is happening within our old, what we would consider the township settlements, is this idea of safety and transformation. So rapid transformation happening in areas um, which are probably under-researched um, to, to fully understand what is happening, not only in the house and the plot, but also in the street um, and the surrounding area. So my work here uh, over, over the past few years has stemmed between um, the Lotus Park informal settlement and the safety issues uh, through the violence prevention through urban upgrading program, but also more recent work around street transformation um, and urban transformation, working with very small public spaces and how do we actually start understanding these public spaces within the housing realm? Um, so it, within this, this idea, it's how are we understanding and mapping everyday safety so that we, we deal with climate change over, over kind of annual cycles, but also this idea of everyday safety um, where particular walkways become key uh, social infrastructure. Um, and further, kind of getting to grips with, um, and I think there's been some really exciting recent work done on this idea of backyard shacks to flats, but this is this is going on um, in, in its sort of self-built, um, self-construction, and some really exciting typologies that we can tap into. But also this also starts changing the interface and creating quite a, a static and hard interface and street, uh, transform street, which is really problematic for the broader neighborhood and its relationship to safety um, within that domain. So we've gone from where you can interact with the street to one which is very cut off from the street. So the, the problematics of what that means as well. Um, and then lastly, moving to my last uh, case study, which is around safety um, and informal settlement upgrading um, and work in Monrovisi Park through the Violence Prevention Through Urban Upgrading Program. Um, and showing this kind of differential between over, over 20 years um, and this rapid growth of informal settlements um, sort of post-1994 and how are we actually managing this and dealing with this in terms of that basic services and the public domain. Um, so within this, of course, this through, through the work, it was uh, it's about an area-based approach to urban upgrading but it was also how can you look at uh, land tenure through spatial recognition and, and through spatial planning, but also um, in terms of institutional. So how can you create your community centers as more ingrained um, institutionally through spatial recognition rather than um, always remaining informal? Um, these spaces were also critical for socially activated safe and fractional spaces. So the Intongeni program running a series of where, where you allow basic services and how, how one upgrades that. And then the bigger kind of clustering of these institutions as, as safe active boxes by day and by night um, and how do they function. But knowing that actually the activation is probably one of the hardest things within that domain of informal settlement upgrading. Um, 
So, so with be, between those sort of three themes and those four case studies, I, I read some some thoughts or some reflections that I thought would open up a discussion, um, but even perhaps into what what that bigger time frame means um, in the housing sphere. So the the one is how are we grappling with area based design, which includes co design, co production, and co management, um, and the second one is is actually grappling with this idea of different scales of spatial recognition, which looks at land tenure at different scales, which includes local methodologies um, coming from particular contexts and areas. Um, and this often requires alternative forms of cooperation and social agency. So, so beyond that notion of, of particip participatory design um, and sort of checkbox uh, 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 basis of planning, into something that is is more alternative, and then fundamentally looking at the urban design of it, which is around this idea of socially activated and safe public spaces with social infrastructure, uh, which is which is terribly underrepresented within the housing sphere um, at that broader level. And with that, I thank you. <laughs>